good evening. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Goose Creek Consolidated Independent School District Board of Trustees. It is 6.30 p.m. on Monday, April the 25th. Um, Mr. Loretta, do we have a forum present this evening? Yes, ma'am. We have, um, oh, you can ask Miss. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Woods, do we have a forum present this evening? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. And is the meeting properly posted? We'll turn things over to Dr. Duarte at this time. President Coffey, school board members, Mr. O'Brien. The opening exercises for the April 25, 2016 board meeting will be presented by students from Austin Elementary. We will begin the opening ceremonies with the prayer led by Janice Coffey. Everyone, please rise. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to meet this evening and for the opportunity to um, hear these uh, students who are coming before us and uh, to uh, serve our school district. We have several concerns that we bring to you this evening. Uh, we ask you specifically to be, the, be with the family of Dickie Woods, who is on the Citizens Bond Advisory Committee, served the school district in various ways, and is, or was the father to Jessica Woods, our school board member. Please be with um, their family as they, they deal with his loss. We ask you also, Lord God, to be with those who are dealing with flooding in our area, the families, the school districts, um, there are deaths, there's rebuilding that needs to go on, and we just ask you to watch over all of that and guide and comfort those who are uh, affected. We ask you to be with the family of uh, the uh, Crockett Elementary as they have suffered a loss. We thank you, Lord God, for um, all the parents and all the teachers who've been working all school year long, all the school personnel who've been working to um, help our students succeed on whatever kind of end of year test they have, whether it's state mandated test or pre-AP test or AP test or just semester exams. We ask you, Lord God, to be with the students as they take those tests, guide them to do their very best. We thank you for the soldiers who protect our land, for the policemen, the firemen, the EMTs who are available to help us every day. We just ask you to watch over all of them and keep them all safe. And again, guide us as we uh, uh, do your work, as we um, work for the best of our school district this evening. We pray in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. The pledges will be led by Brock Glasscock and Reese Benoit. Do you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag, followed by a pledge to the Texas flag? Pledge to the U.S. flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. The Stephen F. Austin Elementary Honor Choir is celebrating early choral singing and how students have learned at a very early age that music is a gift to be shared. The following students will perform Elijah Box and Hero, while a PowerPoint presentation will be shown reflecting their performances throughout this school year. Students performing tonight include Brea Batten, Reese Benoit, Brianna Bettencourt, Skylar Briggs, Brock Glasscock, Zoe Guy, Sarah Holder, Carmen Hebert, Faith Hutchison, Alan Minor, Kayla Montemayor, Valerie Navarro, Mariah Shuttlesworth, Cami Takash, Rebecca Takash. The students are under the direction of Carol Colvin and Principal Laura Smith. Years, as you see the PowerPoints, 
uh, before me at Arsenal Elementary named Carolyn Fletcher. Some of you remember Fletcher's arrow that she sang in the choir. This is my 20th year, hard to believe, that I've been in Austin. And uh, I truly believe that music, that singing is their first instrument, and we must teach them good choral singing, and, uh, and they're prepared for junior high and high school band orchestra and choir. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
high school students participating. Of these, only 2.6% are selected as members of a Texas All-State Music Group. We congratulate all of our students on their accomplishments. Philip Morgan, Director of Fine Arts, will be recognizing our students and staff. Thank you, Dr. Duarte. As they make their way to the front, our Visual Arts Scholastic Event Qualifiers, Jose Herrera, 10th grade, Goose Creek Memorial High School. <laughs> Marisa Gates, 10th grade, Goose Creek Memorial High School. Jose and Marisa's instructor is Jamar Sillian, Goose Creek Memorial High School Art Faculty.
man of the law, 10th grade, Robert E. Lee High School. Get over there like you like them. Okay. There you go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Excellent. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, wait, 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 wait. One more time. That blast is not you. Yeah. No, they're doing pretty good. They're doing really good back there. One, two, three. All right. Super. Thanks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Our National Art Educators Association TAEA Youth Art Month winner is Miss Deborah Sacedo, 10th grader, Robert E. Lee High School. <laughs> for Diana and for Deborah, the instructor is Darcy McDonald. Faculty, Robert E. Lee High School, Visual Arts. GCCISD's TMEA All-State Band member this year for 2016. Playing the French horn, a two-time All-State Band member. TMEA 5A French horn, the second chair in the state of Texas, Mr. Trenton Carr. <laughs> Which also has a lot to his band director. Well, Mr. Richard Lewis. Head band director, that's my spot. <laughs> Our TMEA All State Choir members, a two time All State TMEA Choir member of the TMEA Mixed Choir from Gooseport Memorial High School, is Rachel Freeman, a 12th grader. Also a two-time All-State Choir member in the TMEA Men's Choir, Jalen Douglas, an 11th grader at GCM High School. <laughs> Instructor? Yeah, is this your first time? No, oh, multiple? Okay. Holly New Allen, Varsity uh, Choir Director and Teacher at Goose Creek Memorial High School. And Lauren Hilliard, Instructor at GCM High School. Time, and let me tell you folks, that's rare. A three-time TMEA All-State Choir member in the TMEA Mixed Choir, representing Rosso Sterling High School, Mrs. Erica Irwin, 12th grade. <laughs> Accompanying Erica to this year's TMEA All-State, a one-time All-State qualification, TMEA Women's Choir, Mrs. Zoe Henderson, 11th grader, Rosso Sterling High School. Marvelous instructor, one of the marvelous instructors from Rosso Sterling High School, Mrs. Nikki Thompson. <laughs> we have three TDEA All State dancers, one of whom could not be with us this evening because she's at a dance contest. Uh, Miss Elizabeth Rios with a round of applause, a 12th grader from Robert E. Lee High School. Representing Goose Creek Memorial High School, Ms. Jaylee Marquez, an 11th grader. <laughs> Jaylee's instructors at Goose Creek Memorial are Larissa and Marisa Coy.
Texas Dance Educators Association Scholarship winner and All-State of this year, the only selection for the scholarship, Ms. Giovanni Lidette, 12th grader, Rosa Sterling High School. Giovanni's instructors from Rosa Sterling High School, Mrs. Jamie Lumpkin and Ms. Anashe Patea. time member of the TMEA All State Orchestra, and ladies and gentlemen, your state first chair viola player in Conference 6A. That's right, first chair, Mr. Tomas de la Rosa. Process instructor with Mr. Nicholas McMurray. Focus for faculty, Los Angeles High School, CBJ. <laughs> and finally, but certainly not least, recognizing theater arts and one-act play, your District 21-6A Best Actress in UIL one-act play competition, a 12th grader from Los Angeles High School, Ms. Stephanie Barajas. Barajas, dedicated instructor, theater faculty from Rossa Sterling, Mr. Jeremy Barrow. As you can see by the snapshot, we've had a very successful year in fine arts. We'd also like to thank and recognize our principals as well if they're here. Uh, Mrs. Susan Jackson from Deuce Creek Memorial, if you're present with us. Dr. Joe Farnsworth, Robert E. Lee High School. Thank you. <laughs> and from also starting, Mr. Kevin Foxworth. <laughs> President Coffey, Mr. O'Brien, and uh, Dr. Coffey, thank you so much for allowing us to recognize our fine arts students. Each year, the Houston Area Association of Bilingual Education selects a bilingual and an ESL Teacher of the Year for each participating district. Teachers are nominated by fellow co-workers and administrators, with the Habe Committee reviewing and selecting the finalists. We have our Bilingual Teacher of the Year and our ESL Teacher of the Year to recognize tonight. Joining us is Community Resource Credit Union, who has provided the plaques for the teachers. And representing Community Resource Credit Union is Adelina Abshire. And we... Wrong credit union? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. We have Beacon Credit Union here representing and providing the plaques. <laughs> I would like to recognize Belinda Morales, teacher at Asheville Smith Elementary School, who has been selected as the Jave Bilingual Teacher of the Year. Highland has been selected as a Hobbit ESL Teacher of the Year. She is one of our new arrival teachers.
We congratulate both, both Ms. Morales and Ms. Hicks on their award. Both of these teachers will be acknowledged and honored at the Habe Teacher of the Year Award Ceremony on Saturday, April 30th, 2016. We also would like to recognize Caitlin Levine. She is a Goose Creek Memorial High School 10th grade English teacher, and she recently received the Sarah B. Reader's Promising Young Teacher Award at the 30th Annual Abydos Conference in Houston. Ms. Levine was honored at a luncheon in front of 500 of her peers. The Sarah B. Reuters Promising Young Teacher Award is given annually to a promising young teacher who is selected by a panel of Abydos trainers. They must meet certain criteria in order to be considered. We congratulate Ms. Levine on this prestigious award. The Scholar Athlete Award, which is presented to athletes who are involved in varsity sports, demonstrate leadership and or exemplary performance in team athletics and in the classroom, as well as participate in community service. Coach Mulvey will be recognizing these students for the month of April. Thank you, Dr. Duarte. Board of Trustees, Mr. O'Brien. President Coffey, it's my honor to uh, bring two uh, scholar athletes to you for the month of April. Uh, our first scholar athlete uh, cannot be here, uh, Madison Cates. She's a softball player from Rossville Sterling because they are playing in a play-in softball game today. So I would like to bring her back at our next board meeting so that way she can get that, that honor. Uh, our next uh, scholar athlete for the month of April is from Robert E. Lee High School, and he is a track uh, runner as well as a cross country runner. Romario, will you come on up? Romario Andres. <laughs> Romario is under the direction of Coach Charlie Sothall, who's also right there, and Principal Dr. Joseph Farnsworth. Please stand. Romario is a senior. He is ranked in the top 10% of his class of 384. He is an active member of AVID, band, and soccer. Coach Southall states, Romario always takes care of business in the classroom, which is shown by his high grades. He always leads by example and practice. Romario would make you proud if he were your son. Romario Andres. I'm also uh, fortunate to go ahead and, and we have some resolutions uh, this evening uh, because of our excellent uh, sports performance. So our, I will read our first resolution in its entirety. And uh, with that, it's uh, Robert E. Lee High School Boys Basketball. So Coach Manuel, if you'll please come up. Recognizing the outstanding achievement of the Robert E. Lee High School Boys Basketball Team, who is the 22-5A by district finalist, and recognizing that the attainment of this award was a result of dedicated efforts by members of the Robert E. Lee High School Boys Basketball Team and their coaches, the Board of Trustees of the Goose Creek Consolidated Independent School District extends sincere congratulations to the students, the coach, and the school. Your efforts have brought honor to you and our school district. The Board of Trustees wishes, wishes for you continued success in the future. Coach Manuel and Boys Basketball. <laughs> Our next resolution will Coach Langlois please come up. And Coach Langlois, recognizing the outstanding achievement of the Robert E. Lee High School Boys Soccer Team, who is also a District 22-5A by district finalist. <laughs> Jessica Day Marlin. 
Come on up. You're the next contestant. I'm just kidding. Uh, recognizing the outstanding achievement of the Ross S. Sterling swim team, who is a District 21 6A regional finalist. Final resolution is is a big one. Coach Freeman, if you'll come on up, recognizing the outstanding achievement of the Goose Creek Memorial High School boys soccer team, who not only was the District 22-5A undefeated champion, but the by district champion, the area champion, and the regional finalist. That's, a, that's about as much of a smile as you're going to get out of Coach Raymond. That's it. Thank, thank you all. Participation this evening? Okay. So, since no one signed up for citizens' participation, we will move to item 5, approval of minutes of the March 28, 2016 regular board meeting with our correction. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. A motion from Mr. Lido, the second from Mr. Sampson to approve the minutes of the March 28, 2016 regular board meeting. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? That motion passes, and we'll go to our discussion item. All right. For the superintendent's report this evening, I'm giving a, a brief report. I'm going to lead by example here. I have about a dozen slides, and I'm going to show the administrative team how to get through that in about five minutes. <laughs> so, uh, but now I was blessed to uh, have the opportunity to attend a a leadership conference, and which uh, I've told them it's one of the best trainings I've ever been to. And the main reason was is because it was uh, out in the battlefield in Gettysburg, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and the school actually on the battleground where blood was shed during the Civil War. And you might think, what does that have to do with being a school superintendent? Well, I will tell you that what we learned was, uh, yes, a little bit of history, but more, we delved into the personality and leadership traits of each one of the leaders in the Civil War. So it was really a, an interesting uh, strategic planning session in which we learned how to use which strategy when and so forth. Um, the three strategies I recall were annihilation, you come in and knock everything off the wall. Uh, exhaustion, you drag it out as long as you possibly can to wear out your opponent. And then uh, uh, I forget the third one's actual name, but I call it manipulation or trickery, if you will. You, uh, and throw them a curveball. So uh, this is the training that I was able to go to, and I was very blessed to do so. It was an uh, invitation from the Harris County Department of Education, and uh, of no expense to the district, I'm proud to say, but it was quite a, a, an undertaking. About 10 superintendents and about six administrators from Harris County Department of Ed, we attended this workshop. We're on the battlefield. You see a picture of it. And not very visible to the audience, but the little yellow dots on the map there are just the key as to where we stood on the battlefield. And each point that we stood on the battlefield was an example of how a strategy either worked or it failed. So it's very, very interesting. Um, Major General William Rapp is the current commandant of the Army War College where this took place, where this training took place. And we spent only probably an hour a day in workshop and the training in a room similar to this one, and then we went out to the battlefield and walked station to station to station. This is uh, General Retired Kevin Dixon, who's one of the presenters. He's also the lead professor of the Army War College. And then also Captain Stephen Matt was also one of the presenters. A great group of gentlemen. It's just a little bit of what some of the presentations went through. There's Commandant uh, Rapp presenting. General Dixon, and this is on the battlefield, actually you can see where the, uh, the shoreline is built up to stop the enemy 
from crossing the boundary. One of the things that one of the points we stopped at was, uh, you'll see a few moments here at Monuments. That was actually uh, where President Lincoln stood to give the Gettysburg Address, uh, um, wanting to make sure that, that those who died did not die in vain, but they were moving forward. But at each one of the points, uh, there was a point to notice um, of a strategy that occurred, and uh, I'm trying to run one through here. Um, but one of the things that, that you learn is, um, uh, in leadership is it's not just about you, it's about your entire team. And so, talking about a strategy from the north and the south, um, you may uh, have a leadership style that you entrust everyone to go out and do their job. And if one of the people you entrust to do your job doesn't do your job, then it all falls back on you. And it was interesting, what I found the most interesting, it said either side could have won the war at any given battle. But these battles took place sequentially, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, in a very short period of time. And almost every strategy you can imagine was employed during that time. And as we know, the outcome of it, uh, it did end, and we celebrated independence on July 4th. However, the battle rolled on for a few more months. Just uh, those that didn't want to give up and quit, just yet. But uh, you know, Robert E. Lee, well, I showed a picture there that was in the room. Uh, actually, we had a school named after him, and it was just, um, he was one of those that was very trusting of his men. And as it turned out, some of the uh, leaders that he sent out into the field to charge some of the platoons became ill, and they fell ill in the field, and therefore didn't follow their duties as they were charged with, and it led to the potential loss of the Civil War. And prior to that, um, this is a few more of the monuments as we were walking through. Uh, one of the other lessons learned, I guess, in leadership is tell your own story. Uh, the monuments, there's, there's more monuments in this uh, several hundred acre track of battlefield than there is anywhere else uh, collectively. But each monument represents a platoon or someone's story in the Civil War. And um, for example, tell your own story is one of the points in the yellow dots that we stopped in top lot. And tell your own story has to do with um, where a monument is, is where they said uh, one of the fallen generals fell on the battlefield. He actually fell on his own side of the field. His uh, men wanted him to be shown as having crossed the uh, the, the, the line, the battle line, so they, they marked the monument on the opponent's field, and that's where the monument is today, on the wrong side of the actual battlefield where he died. So the moral of that story is we need to tell our own story. We want to be accurate with our story, but we want to tell our own story, bottom line. Um, and then I, I, the week prior to my conference here, we went to the National Convention, just a little side door of a our convention, and I met with Dr. Ruby Payne, who will be our convocation speaker next year, and I just wanted to share that as well. So that's my five-minute presentation on the strategic leadership that I went to in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and uh, that's my presentation. Thanks, Eric. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Interesting. Um, next item on the agenda is uh, action items, and we have consideration of consent agenda. Everything is in consent agenda this evening. Yes, ma'am, we have the action item uh, 7A, consent number one, engagement letter from the uh, independent audit firm, Start Garcia Stanley, LLC, for the districts and the GCCSD's money purchase pension plans and financial audits for the fiscal year 2015-16. Number two, appointments of administrative committee members to the money purchase pension plan. Number three, interlocal agreement with Harris County for use of public safety rodeo systems. Number four, purchase and replacement of the synthetic turf at Star Wars Stadium. Number five, request for proposal, food service management company and delegate authority to superintend the finalized contract with Aramark to provide food service management services to the district. Number six, change orders. Number three, as submitted by the construction manager at risk, CMAR. Marshall Construction Company, LTD, and to amend the CMR contract to reduce the guaranteed maximum price of each of the three new elementary schools. Number seven, select competitive seal proposal, CSP, as the delivery method for repairs and or replacements to life safety and sound systems at various district facilities. Number eight, select competitive seal proposal, CSP, as the delivery method for repairs and or replacements of emergency lighting and lighting control systems at various facilities. And number nine, tax refunds. One point of clarification on number um, number four. Just wanted to point out in my backup paperwork I provided to you was option one and option two. Uh, administration is recommending option two be the one that we'll vote on tonight, as it is the lesser cost to the district. We're able to salvage a little bit of the underlying material. 
volunteers and save the district a little bit of money. Does anyone have any item who won't pull tonight? I don't pull, please. <laughs> any others? Three. Three? Any others? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the remaining items.
questions on this agenda item? Move for approval. Option two. Option two. Option two. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a second. Okay, we've got a motion from Mr. Loretto and a second from Mr. Richard to approve option two on the purchase and replacement of the synthetic turf at Starwood Stadium. Any further discussion? If not, I invite you to raise your right hand. I had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Option two. It's on page 63. Page 63. Oh, okay. okay. I see it now. Do you have any questions about that? <coughs> okay. All in favor of option two, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? That motion passes 6 0. And next we go to future board agenda items, board training, and board meetings. Are there any future board agenda items? Yes. Um, I asked at our last meeting if we could put the use of the track for public. On, on this agenda, and it wasn't on there. The uh, facility use agreement was put in the um, update. It was provided in the weekly update. Okay. Do you still want it on an agenda for a board meeting? I'll look it up. It could be for a point of discussion, further discussion for sure. Other future board agenda items? Yeah, um, this one is about the uh, facility at Highlands, the site offices, and everything. But I think that there's a agreement with the county and the school district on that that was supposed to be removed. Yes, we've uh, submitted. Uh, the contract back to the county and we're waiting to hear back from them. Okay. The district accepted the contract, made some modifications, submitted it back to them for acceptance or modifications back. So we're in that transition process waiting on them. Okay. So did it change much from what one of the points of interest was the original agreement was for 20 years and uh, legal representation said it's not allowed to extend it beyond five just for the nature of changes that occur over a long period of time. So that was one of the major things, as I would call. Um, Mr. Peebles may be in the audience, may be able to answer anything beyond that. It was namely the timeliness of it. And um, there was old language that included, Mr. Peebles, would you like to speak to the older language that you brought it up to speed on the Samson, I, I regret that I didn't bring it with me tonight, but it was basically the uh, shortening of the term, although it was renewable every five years, or could be. And there were also some safety issues that uh, I addressed in that, uh, some uh, indemnity modification agreements such as that that would give the school district a better protection than we had under the old agreement. And I think we also did some changes to the termination clause, where uh, we could uh, we could terminate, uh, but maybe prorate the expense if they prepaid any money to us. Okay. In other words, we want it to be a win-win situation. We don't want them to be out anything. We don't want to be out anything. So there was. Um, I think the new draft that we presented was merely an update and an improvement overall. Well, the, the the new draft in the facilities of the are, is there going to be any future district plans for the that area? So the only thing I know of that changed was that the old, for one of the updates was the old plan said sun up, I mean, yeah, sun up to sun down. Mm -hmm. And since 20 years ago, the county has provided lights. Right. So um, that was an edit that needed to be made just for updating the contract verbiage. And um, that was added to allow for that. But one of the things I know that we did, uh, we did some investigation to ensure that it's a county park on school district property, so the county was responsible for utilities and things of that nature. And all that was clarified in the updated version. And so the, the change in years, and the meeting up from 20 to 5, as recommended. That, that gives us, we don't really know what uh, we might need that land for at some, some point. And if we obligate it for 20 years, we may have to uh, make some other main purchases or modifications. 
applications of that site. That gives us more flexibility in the use of that property that belongs to the school district. Mm. But in that same contract, you, you have a, like a, a clause where you can get out of it. With the, there is a termination clause. Right. Yes. So 20 to uh, 5, it wouldn't have been any difference, would it? Well, I think it uh, makes it a lot easier to justify that termination so we don't have that issue with the county. So we're aware of the fact that we, we may have some need for that land sometime in the near future. I'm concerned that since this is not actually an agenda item, right. it's just a request for one that we probably right. should wait to discuss it. I'd be happy to discuss it with you, Mr. Sampson, and any time. And any other board member for that matter. Thank you, Mr. Peebles. Are there any other future board agenda items? Board training, we have um, the SLI training coming in San Antonio on June the 16th through the 18th, and I would like to encourage 100% attendance if we can get it at that uh, training. And if you're interested in attending, let Ms. Garcia know. Uh, board meetings, our next board meeting is the second Monday in May, I believe. I'm 9th of May, okay. And um, at this point, we will uh, be set with a closed session pursuant to the following section of the Texas Open Meetings Act, 551.071, 551.072, and 551.074. No action will be taken by the commission closed meeting. Moving into open session, no action was taken while the board was in closed session. Next item on the agenda is item E, consideration of personnel. First item there is number one, accept resignations. We have 21 resignations, I believe. That is correct. We have 21 resignations. Uh, administration recommends approval. Approval. Second. Yes, sir. 27, I'm sorry, I was not reading the correct uh, page. Right, it, it is. And so is there a motion from Mr. Richard and I missed the second. Who is the second? Mr. 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 Rader. And we have 27 resignations. Is there any discussion? If not, I'll invite it. Please raise your right hand. Any opposed? That motion passes 6-0. Next, the administration recommends approval of administrative elections, including speech language pathologists and high school counselor. And do you want to tell us who they are? Yes, ma'am. High school counselor is Michelle Armenta at Goose Creek Memorial High School. And speech pathologist is Paige Shy. Do you have motions? Second. We've got a motion from Ms. Cockrell and a second from Mr. Loretta to approve the administrative elections of the speech language pathologist and the high school counselor. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Any opposed? That motion passes 6 0. Unit number three is approve renewal or termination of employment of instructional personnel contracts. We have a motion. Of this long list of people. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Lawyer. Do you have a second? Okay. okay. Do you have a motion from Mr. Lawyer and a second from Ms. Cockrell to approve the renewal or termination of employment of instructional personnel contracts? Um, I don't think there were any listed for termination on that. Um, so it, just approve renewals. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Any uh, opposed? Any abstentions? We have five, four, and one abstention. No, no, none opposed. That motion passes, and the meeting is adjourned at 8.13.